I wanted to tell a story about slavery and I wanted to find an interesting angle into the narrative. And I thought about a free man, a man who has a family who's kidnapped into slavery. And I, the reason why I chose this angle is I wanted that person to be everyone in the audience. And as I was thinking about the idea, my wife found this book called 12 Years a Slave, and there it was. Solomon Northup is my name. Solomon Northrop was a free black man in Saratoga, New York, in the middle of the 19th century. And he's a musician, and he's in a place where he has a sense of equality. Mr. Northrop, I have two gentlemen whose acquaintance you should make. And in 1841, he was lured by two sort of showmen with the prospect of earning some money by playing music for their shows. We could give you one dollar for each day's services and three dollars for every night played at our performances. Solomon agrees to go and play with these two guys. When they get to Washington, they have a sort of celebratory dinner. Gentlemen, he feels very ill, goes to bed, and he wakes up chained in a dungeon. Well, boy, how you feel now? And that's the beginning happens to him. You ain't a free man. You're nothing but a Georgia runaway. Come Get on, move it. He shipped himself to New Orleans, and his reality is, I mean, everything is new to him. My name's not Platt. My name. Your name is Platt. His name has changed. His paper's taken away from him. All identification lost, and he ends up sold into slavery. You see things through his eyes. You experience the, the, the environment and the, and the cruelty and the brutality and the dehumanization of people on that journey. We've all felt that there's never been a film about slavery that really dealt with it in such an unflinching way. And the perspective of coming from outside of it, someone who's not exposed and is suddenly thrown into this world, we can all identify with. A thousand for Platt. My fairest price. Mr. Chapin. Yes, sir. You can take these two up to the mill, start them working. When Solomon gets onto the slave plantations, you know, he has really essentially three different slave masters, all of whom treat him in different ways. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. You have in the character of Ford, someone who is a kind of benevolent figure who wants to be compassionate. My great thanks, Master Ford. My thanks to you. Then you have someone like Edwin Epps, who is just a, essentially a sadist, a very brutal person. Man does how he pleases with his property. Damn you! And then you have figures like Judge Turner, who is a sort of mysterious figure. What you earn is yours to keep. But what is consistent is this idea that they know that there is something different about him. Just inherently, they're aware of it. And they all feel that it is something that they need to destroy. I will have flesh, and I will have all of it. He was clearly very intelligent, and he recognized very quickly that his life could be snatched away from him on any given day. And so I think he felt like the strongest thing he could do was to stay alive, and that if he stayed alive long enough, perhaps he would find his way out. Solomon realizes that you know there's a possibility of him seeing his family again, so he holds strong. Uh, the events are astonishing and cruel. I survive! I will not fall into despair. I will offer up my talents to Master Ford. I will keep myself hardy till freedom is opportune. For Solomon, a lot of this journey is, is not just that journey to get home, but really that journey to understand the importance of the privileges that we all enjoy as Americans, but also our families. There's this modesty, but a certain kind of formality to him. It's beautiful, it's heartbreaking. The book is a testament to Solomon Northup, but also about a testament to the history of what was going on within slavery at that time. Oh, pick this cotton. Pick this cotton. Oh, pick this cotton. Oh, pick this cotton. My ancestors were slaves. They're from the Caribbean. And it was just one of those things where within film, it was never given some kind of platform. It kind of deserves as an important historical event especially in the United States. I just wanted to make a movie about it. For me, it was, it was nonsensical. It was obvious, it was logical. And cut, cutting, okay. And this is a story about one of the harshest structures that's ever been created in the history of the world.
and it is somebody trying to survive that with their mind intact. And they do, you know. And I feel like that's an extraordinary thing to see, to witness, and to be kind of part of.